guys, welcome to the studio. Today is your lucky day. Why? Because today I'm gonna put handles on a pitcher. Now, you may have seen one of my previous getting a handle on it videos, which is awesome, yeah, I know. But today I'm gonna to show you how to put a handle on an altered rim form and a bigger form. So this is a pitcher. What do you need to do this? Well, the way I do it and what I use is kind of simple. I'll go through the tools. Serrated rib. Yours could be clean. Mine is dirty. Just the way it is. Uh, one of these little pastel color shapers. I love these little guys. I have a bunch of them in my studio. A knife. You can use a Fettling knife. I am using the Dolan 220S knife. A sponge, because you need sponges. A cookie cutter. What do you think of this? Little flower. You know, you can choose whatever shape you want. A piece of foam. Oh yeah, foam. A pot, pitcher, cup, mug, teapot, anything that needs a handle. You know, whatever you have in your life that you've got to get a handle on, that's what you need. And of course, the handle. Now, I've already done a demo, a video on pulling handles here on YouTube, so you guys, go back and find that. If you're not a subscriber yet, go ahead right now, perfect time, take a minute, click on the little subscribe button, give me a thumbs up for a like, leave me a comment at the end, I love to read your comments. So I've already pulled handles, I didn't take the time to do that here because I thought we all know how to pull handles, if not, like I said, refer to my previous YouTube video. All right. So this has been pulled and left set out till it's the same moisture content as the pot I'm putting it on. So they are not leather hard yet, but they're definitely not wet. So they're, def they're to the touch where you can put your hand on it doesn't stick. You know, it's, it just goes in, comes right off. It's all good. Now, I also sometimes will use a little butane torch if my handles aren't stiff enough to get them to stiffen. I'm going to try not to do that on this one because whenever you put whenever you put a torch on something, you're risking cracking it. It's just it's the truth. And I've used torches successfully and unsuccessfully, so we're going to try to do this without the torch. But if I need to, I will use that. All right. So I've pulled this handle. I've let it lay on a board. You can see I have one already right here. This one is shaped, so I pre-shaped them to get an idea of how I want them on the pot. You know, so this is kind of a nice little arch. Here's, um, here's a reference piece. This is a much older piece, but this is the sort of handle that I'm going for. Never mind the, never mind what's happening on the surface of the pot. This is a great pot, but it's a couple years old now. So this is the handle shape I'm going for. A nice art little a nice arch, a little higher on the rim, you know, not flush with the rim. I definitely want it to come up higher. All right. So what I'm going to do first, and I'm just going to hold the pot, the handle up to the pot, and I'm just going to get an idea. Now that is obviously huge. Like that's way huge. I mean, I could go with it, but it would be crazy. So we're not going to do that. So I'm going to take some off, and I'm just going to use my knife. I'm just going to cut a chunk off because I don't need that. So that'll give me... Mm, all right, so I like the thickness of this, the width of this, so I don't want to cut this down anymore. I want to leave this wide, so if I'm going to take any more off, it's going to come off the bottom. And I know when I did that, my knife rolled off. Yes, it did. So I'm just going to even this guy up because I didn't get it quite even. And looking at it again, yeah, I'm definitely going to take some off the bottom. It was uneven anyways. All right, so I'll take a chunk off the bottom get rid of those. All right, now comes the fun part. We get to use the foam. The foam. <laughs> All right, and if you don't talk into your pots, you should try it. It's really fun. Just telling you, it's one of my favorite things. I've always liked to talk into stuff. I don't know. I think that's normal. At least it is in my life. All right, now I'm going to lay this here. Let me turn it sideways so you can see. Get an idea for the shape. Now I use the foam because it protects the, uh, the pot. You know, I use it mostly because the rim is altered and it won't sit flush. It'll kind of wobble. But I've also discovered it's great for everything. Like anytime you have to look at a pot, you can always sit your pot on the foam and it protects it. I also use it sometimes when I'm glazing and waxing. 
I maybe this is almost where I need it all right so now we get to the fun part using the cookie cutter I'm gonna pinch out the top of the handle right here like this so from what you're seeing is you're seeing this let me come this way let me, let me come around to the side here so I'm just pinching it flattening it and widening it oh and you might ask about my stool yes it's an old office chair I just took the back off it it's wheeled which is great for maneuvering in the studio if you don't have one yet highly recommend it a wheeled stool is what all the cool kids are doing all the cool kids got wheeled stools right so I cut that shape and that's what I get now there you go now you can see it better so that's the finished edge and I'm just gonna tap it down a bit I'm not going to have to do much else to this once it's on the piece. I'm just going to line that up. And now I'm going to gently hold this. And I'm going to do the same thing to the other end. I'm just going to line up the cookie cutter. And then I'm just going to press down. I wonder if I can. Oh, I think I can. Can you guys see this? And I'm just pressing in and cutting off a chunk. Ta-da! And I'll pinch that out a little bit. Oh well. Why didn't you tell me it was crooked? That's no good. I have to redo it. All right, so you saw how I did it. Just when you do your own, do it straight. Don't make it crooked. Don't do what I say, not as I do, right? So I'm just going to pinch this out also like I did before. So I'm pinching it, I'm thinning it. So if you look, I'm thinning it out right here because I don't want this really thick chunk of clay where it joins to the pot and then it looks awkward. You know, you have this transition that pots come along nice and smooth then also this huge bump of a handle. No, don't want that. So I'm just smoothing this out, pinching it just a bit so it tapers. So now look, let's see if you can see that taper. And I did the same thing already on the top. Now I'm just gonna dry fit the handle you guys think see the shape that has a nice arc to it I'm happy with that now this rim is altered and that's a consideration you know whenever you alter a rim and you want to put something on it you have to think about where's that handle going to touch that alteration now I could put my handle down here right let me pull the pot up a bit more right here where the slip comes out I can put the handle down here so it doesn't even bump the alteration you can go lower or you can actually incorporate it into the alteration. And that is what I have done on this other piece. If you look, see that handle? And you see where the alteration is? Stay. <laughs> so right here, you can see it just has this little crook. It's like a little hand holding it, almost like this, right? Like it's grabbing the pot. I'm okay with that. I actually think it's kind of cute the way it looks like it's holding onto it. Kind of Dr. Seussian, right? Little hand cupping it. So I'm good with that, and that's what I'll go with for this one. So let me just sip, do the uh, sip and score. What? No, slip and score. That's where if I knew how to edit properly, I would edit out that, but I don't. So just have a nice laugh at it and enjoy, because it's going to stay like that. And I'm going to slip and score where it attaches here as well. And I'm going all the way up because the handle is going to go all the way up. Now I start with the top. That way I can adjust the bottom to get my arc exactly how I want it. So I'm just lining this up at the back, making sure it's in the center. Key thing, be in the center. And I'm pinching. So you can see I'm rolling my fingers and I'm pinching this little handle onto the lip of this pot and you can hear like a squishy noise you know like squish 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 that means it's joining that's good you want to hear that noise all right so I have the top on Move that now we have to do the bottom so I have to look at my arc and decide how I want this to be and this is a bigger form so I want it to have enough space for your hand to fit in but not so large that it's awkward and I also want it to 
be at the right point, you know, the right fulcrum point for when I'm pouring. You have to think about where you put a handle and the volume of liquid in the piece. You know, how heavy is that going to be for the user? On this right here, I made the handle so high that when this is full of liquid and you're pouring, it's easy. Even if you have, you know, any kind of wrist problems, you know, that's something I know some of us are young and we don't really think about the weight of holding something full of liquid in our hands, but I have a lot of my clients who are older and it's hard for them to hold a big one gallon pitcher. Now this isn't a one gallon pitcher, but this one here is about a half gallon. You, know, you think about the person using that. If that's really heavy and hard for them to hold up, how are they going to safely pour that? And then they're not even going to want to use the piece you made. That's not good. No. So you have to think about the user if you're making functional wear. Now, if you're making stuff just for you or just because you like the way it looks, you do what you want. That's your choice. But for me, this picture, I know where it's going and I know the person that's getting it and she's going to want the handle to work really well for her when it's full of liquid. So I'm going to make it that way. All right, so I've decided I want this to join here and I'm going to just score the bottom where the handle is and I'm just going to line it up, double check everything. And what I'm doing is I'm using that slip to make a mark. So now I've marked it. I'm making sure it's completely aligned. You always want the bottom here and the top to be aligned. It's no good if your handle's like, oh, it's starting to stick, like way over here, right? Or way over there. That's just bad. You want them aligned. All right, so that's where I want it. This looks good. Let me score. Now that slip I used left a little bit behind when I moved the handle, right? So that made my mark, so I know exactly where I want to put my scoring, which I just did. So let me move this to the side. You can see right here. You can see right there, right there on the pot. And that's where this little guy is going to go. So I'm just line them up. And I know it's correct because I already checked it, right? But it doesn't hurt to double check. So I'm going to support this on the inside with my hand because the, the picture is still a little damp. I don't want to dent it. And I'm just going to do that same rolling motion that I did at the top. And it's joining. Yeah, it makes the squishy sound again. That's all good. See how it is? Looks good to me. So this handle is a little wet. I'm not going to need to use the torch on it, but I am going to have to probably set this to dry for about 10 minutes upside down like this to keep the arch. And then what I will do is flip it over and I will adjust just, I'll adjust just a little bit. I'll just, just adjust. <laughs> All right. And before I do that, I'm just going to go in with a damp sponge and I'm just going to wipe the areas where I join this. You know, there's a little bit of slip. There's a little bit of score marks. Maybe I bumped it. And I just want to clean this up now. That way it'll save me work later. And the last thing I do before I set it to dry for a bit is I'm going to take the little color shaper and I'm just going to go along here, removing any excess slip that has squeezed out. You know, I just draw it along and then I wipe it off on my sponge. And I do that on the top and the bottom of the join. There. And actually, sometimes I'll go in after it's dried a bit and do that again if it looks like some more slip has come out. I have found by cleaning the slip up now before it starts to dry, I don't really have problems with cracking. That's not really an issue in my work. Okay, so there it is. There's the picture. We'll let the handle dry a bit and uh, it'll be all set. Thanks guys. I hope this video helps you with getting a handle on it especially getting a handle on pictures or altered rims. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, please leave it in the comments below. I would love to hear it. And if you're not following me again, follow me. Why not? It's awesome. All right, guys. I'll catch you later. See you next time in the studio.